Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. Flowers just may be the first thing you notice in Kalamazoo County, Michigan. This county is the biggest producer of bedding plants in the USA. But stand by the roadside and another bright yellow blossom may roll into view. It's a rare John Deere brought back to life by classic tractor collector Steve Gazdag. Okay, this is a 1936 John Deere DI or D Industrial. And originally it was shipped to Detroit there were only three DIs shipped to Michigan, one to Detroit, one to Lansing, and one to Sturgis. A friend of mine has restored the one that was shipped to Lansing, and we haven't found the third one. But we've got two of the three restored. It's unique because Deere recognized the year before in 1935 and had a corporate decision to make tractors that were suitable for industrial use. So they recognized there was a market there, there was a need. Starting in 1935 and wrapping up in 1941, John Deere built just 100 of these industrial Model D tractors. Steve thinks this one spent its working life as a road grader in the Detroit area. For sure, when he first ran across this rare DI, it looked nothing like it does today. It did run, but not real good, and it was bent up and it had a pipe for a muffler The fenders were about shot for. Um, the tires were bare. I mean, there was just no tread left on them. The paint was green, faded green, had rust-oleum silver, had a little orange, had a little yellow, and then just some spatter of whatever. Kind of looking like a uh, joke tractor, I guess. The collage of colors hid the old John Deere's true identity, so Steve didn't really know what he had until a tractor collecting friend checked out the serial number. And he looked it up with the, part, with the uh, serial numbers, and he said, oh boy, you got you a DI. And I said, well, it's got this and that. He said, yep, that's what's on there. It's, it's got a hand brake, and that's special to the DIs, for example. And uh, I said, well, maybe we got to work on this bugger. A year and a half of chasing parts and plenty of elbow grease brought the 1936 DI back to life. Of course, the yellow paint is the first sign that this is an industrial tractor, but there are plenty of other differences. The decals on this tractor are somewhat unique because they're black. You'd think of a green D, you gotta have yellow, but on the uh, industrials they were black, and the model DI, of course, as it appears out here, because it's a D industrial. This seat that's mounted on the tractor is actually an industrial seat, and uh, this one I had to hand build from a drawing, but the actual seats when they were produced was produced by a company in Milwaukee called Milsco. The original seat could be turned 90 degrees to help with road grading or other industrial work, and there's a double-handled clutch lever that made it easier to work the clutch from different driving positions. The rear wheels and brakes are out of the ordinary, too. These are big cast iron wheels with, of course, the rims clamped on. But the unique thing about these wheels, inside, they're turned out as brake drums. These, this is actually the brake drum. The industrial goes about twice as fast as the green tractor because it doesn't have as much torque, but it gets the speed, and that's what's good for, for grading the road, for example. Now you can stand up pretty easily to drive this thing, and you can just get a nice view when you're sitting over that big hood and the, and the uh, exhaust stack and the air cleaner there. And Think Steve's got yellow fever? Well, he has been known to go overboard once in a while. Exhibit A, his combine demolition days. One of the things over here is the combine that was left over from my demolition derby at the, uh, at the fair. And we had uh, about a dozen combines that we kind of tore up and got the fun out of crashing into each other. I was crazy enough to be the flag man. Exhibit B, his farm toy collection. What you can see here is my one toy collection room. And you can see what happens when you go too far Started collecting oh, about 30 years ago. Te uh, 20 years ago, this room was in pretty nice shape. From then on, look out. This is what happens when you know you've gone too far. But I won't quit. No, he won't quit. But rest assured, it's really John Deere Green that's been in his blood since he was just a kid. Steve has plans to restore his dad's 1941 John Deere B, and he's already got his granddad's John Deere 60 looking sharp. But I'm pretty proud of my 60 because that got brought new on this farm, 
and the uh, the bee got bought new on this farm in 41. So it's it's had a little history already and it hasn't left the farm. Whether it's a green deer tractor or a rare yellow one, for Steve Gazdag, it's all about holding on to a little piece of the past. I like the two-cylinder. I like the putt-putt, and it kind of brings back a lot of memories of, I'd be here at my mother's next door here, and when I was growing up, I'd get up in the morning, and the windows would be open, and I could tell which tractor and who was farming that day. It's history. It's how people did things, and it really, it's important to tell people how we got, you know, to where we are from where we were, and it's important to know where we were. And, you know, they don't, people don't appreciate those things anymore these days, and I think it really helps to be able to show them, okay, this is how we did things.